What's up guys, it's Dino again. Today's a short video, but I wanna talk a little bit about layer order, especially when you're dealing with adjustment layers. Okay, because when you're in your layers palette, which if you don't have it open, go to window and go to layers, okay? But when you're in your layers palette, it's obvious when there's, I don't know, for lack of a better term, objects. Let's make a black square on one layer and we'll make a white square on another, right? Layer order is really obvious here. If I take the white square above, then it's on top of the black and vice versa. And I can move them around, etc. Those of us who do a lot of graphics work or composite work, etc., we know that. But see, layer order is important in adjustment layers too. And when it comes to like your either color correction or exposure correction, or you're mastering your image for contrast or exposure, and of course, color grading, it's very, very important to have layer order. Now, I draw a lot of parallels with guitar pedals because I'm a guitarist and I have been all my life, but I know not a lot of you are not, so we're not going to draw those parallels. I used to do that a lot in workshops and some people would go, yeah, I get it. You know, and other people go, what? So it seems simple, but I'd like to mention it now real quick. So it's, you know, so it can be obvious and you can think about it. Layer order matters. One of the greatest ways to do is to ramp up some of the, uh, you know, sort of looks here real quick and then show you. Here's a selective color adjustment layer. I'm going to go to the neutrals and I'm going to pump up the magentas and the yellows a lot. 30% each. That's a ton, right? Then I'm going to add a curves and I'm going to brighten it. All right. Now, we're not going to decide if this is a good look or not. It does not matter. What have we done? We've brightened and we've added a ton of magenta and yellow into the neutrals. Okay, I have curves on top of selective color. If I take the curves layer and put it below, I get a slightly different look. See, let's put it back to compare. That's what we got originally. And this is a different look. You could argue that despite this extreme look, that the curves below looks a little bit better. Why is that? Well, we got to think about the linear aspect of layers. One step and then the next and then the next and the next. Okay, so for example, if we have it in this order, we're doing this to the image with selective color. We're adding a bunch of color to it, and then we're brightening the color that we added, along with the image itself, because the image is below everything. But that's what we're doing. We're taking the boosted color and we're brightening the boosted color. When we flip it, we are now starting here. We're brightening the image first, and then we're boosting the color. And because we brightened it, we have changed the range, if you will, of what's considered neutral. And a lot of coloring tools in the adjustment layers in Photoshop are based on highlights, neutrals, and shadows, right? Midtones. So they, they, it does matter the brightness or darkness quote going in. That's my term. You, you're sending something into the next layer. So that's why the order really, really matters. So you might be looking at this and go, I have a lot of color and I like it. I'm trying to brighten it because it feels dark and it's just a fail. Well, maybe you should brighten it first. See how the order makes a big, big difference? One of the most like obvious ways to really illustrate this is to take an extreme gradient map. I'm going to put it on classic just to make the blend nice and even. We're going to make an extreme gradient map real quick. Something just kind of completely crazy. There we go. Now, how does the gradient map work? Great illustration here. Okay, from left to right, you look at the gradient over here on this window. The dark area of the images, the dark luminosities are going to be red. And as it gets brighter and brighter and brighter, it's going to blend into cyan, giving us a neutral gray in the middle because they're opposite colors. And all the way to the brightest point, we have pure cyan. And you can see that here. Highlights are cyan, shadows are red, everything's blended in between. Let's do our brightening effect again. Let's go to curves. If we brighten, we get a predictable effect. But we're getting a brightening, excuse me, a brighter and a darker version of the colors. But look again. The range of the colors isn't changing. Do you see this highlight in her face is all cyan. If I brighten it, you can see, even though we get too extreme, we start clipping, but the cyan and the red range did not change. We are brightening and darkening, but the cyan and the red did not change. Okay. But if I put curves below, now not only the cyan, and the red changed a lot, but watch what happens when I move the curves. I'm literally moving the range because as I brighten and darken the image, the luminosities that I am sending up to the gradient map are changing. Turn off the gradient map for a second and obviously you can see it. See? So what we're sending to the gradient map is changing. This makes a radical difference. So this is very different from this. See, just by moving the order layer, the layer order, excuse me. So the curves on top says, I like this look and I'm going to modify this look as is. Therefore you darken. I want to darken the image and then I want to color what's there. 
Okay. Now you may not ever need an ex extreme example like this, but understanding that layer order is important is very, very crucial. Now, a quick final tip. What I recommend when you're fi finishing your image, if you will, you're getting into color grading because you've done all your, your cleanup or whatever you want to do. And now you want to color grade. I always like to start. Let's say you're going to do some exposure correction of some manner. Maybe it's curves. I'll put that sort of as my first steps in my mastering layers, mastering, including color grading, right? And so let's say I put it on luminosity blending mode just to minimize color shifting while I'm brightening up and down. Okay. Something like that. And then after my correction layers, if you will, even, even a color correction layer, you might use color balance as a color correction layer. I still put it above exposure correction, which is curves, exposure adjustment layer levels, things like that. Okay. And then I'll put my maybe color balance as a corrector or as a grader and selective color or gradient map coloring let's put a gradient map real quick just to have something and we're going to put that on soft light perhaps and maybe 30 percent okay and then after that my final mastering will probably be a levels set to luminosity blending mode and then i can do my final mastering here contrast and shift so corrective exposure followed by corrective color followed by creative color finalizing with you know, I guess for lack of a better term, mastering levels at levels is my favorite, but it's just a final way to get the, the look. Why do I have sort of corrective exposure underneath the color and above it? Because of the layer order. I sometimes want to brighten what I'm sending into the color work. And then I want to modify and finalize what's on what's done. Like I like the color work, but I need to brighten the overall image because if I start brightening down here, depending on my layers, whether it's one or two or 15, I could get a strange result. I could start getting unpredictable results. I wanted to brighten it and all my colors moved. What happened? Yeah, layer order is important. So keep that in mind on anything that you're doing when it comes to adjustment layers. But when that's my recommended flow, again, you get all your cleanup done, you get your corrective exposure, corrective color, creative color, and then finalizing or mastering exposure is usually the best. Experiment with this, get a feel for it, play with the layers as you're working, change the order around, and you'll see that sometimes it will change very, very little or not at all. And sometimes they'll change radically. And never mind building up layers with different um, blending modes when it comes to calculations to do certain utility functions. That's a whole nother discussion where layer order is absolutely crucial. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below or send me an email at ninobatista.com. Thanks guys.